Hello, Chicago. How we feeling? All right. My name is Mike Stroutmanis. I am the Chief Engagement Officer for the Obama Foundation, and it is so good to be with you today. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, some folks that we have in the house. We have Chicago City Clerk, Anna Valencia is here. Anna, are you with us? It's great to see you. Thank you for being with us. And we also have uh, someone who is brand new to Chicago. The Chicago Community Trust is an important organization in this city, and they have a new CEO, Helene Gale. Let's give Helene a big Chicago welcome. We are so grateful that you're with us today. This is a special evening and a major milestone in making the Obama Presidential Center on Chicago's South Side a reality. The Obama Presidential Center will be a global hub for civic engagement with programs that will empower and equip civic innovators and young people with the skills and the tools they need to create positive change in their communities. The center will be an economic engine as well, as a, and a place of life and vibrancy on the South Side. The OPC will be a cultural attraction that reinvests in Jackson Park, one of our community's historic treasures, and creates a new destination for South Siders, people across the city, and around the world to learn, become inspired, play, and relax. Now, as many of you know, we announced our initial vision for the Obama Presidential Center in May last year. Since then, the foundation has participated in seven public meetings with thousands of participants, including you, numerous stakeholder meetings, a dozen fairs and festivals on the South Side. I love this job because I got paid to go to Chicago's festivals on the South Side. That's all right. Countless small group and one-on-one -on -one conversations. And I know it's countless because I try to count them. And we have reviewed thousands of submissions that we've received online. Now, through this process, we have made several changes and improvements to our plans to reflect the input we received. And you're going to hear more about those specific changes in the various breakout rooms tonight. Now, we recently filed our planned development application to request the proper zoning and approvals for the OPC site we have proposed. We expect to meet with the Chicago Plan Commission and go before the full city council this spring. At the same time, we are participating in the federal Section 106 review process which evaluates proposed changes to historic sites like Jackson Park. These public input sessions for both, like tonight's meeting, are happening on these parallel tracks that allow us to gather all of the public input together at one time and update our plan accordingly. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about what's going to happen tonight. You might guess that tonight's gathering is slightly larger than your average plan development public meeting. And we are thrilled to have so much interest in this important project. Tonight, we're going to share where we are in the planning process. We're going to take as many questions as we can and hear as much feedback as possible. Now, we've already received lots of feedback from the South Side community and across the city online in the last few days. And tonight, we're going to address many of the issues that we've heard online, the past few days and over the past two years as we've had this public conversation. We're going to respond to what we've heard. So the first hour tonight, our team is going to give you an overview of the center, let you know what we're working on, and we're also going to take some of your questions. Then we're going to move into breakout sessions around McCormick Place, where you're going to be able to hear a short presentation on a specific topic and ask questions and provide feedback on that topic. Breakout sessions are going to last two hours. 
with the presentation at the top of each hour. This is going to give folks an opportunity to move to a different room and hear another presentation for the second hour if you're interested. Now, if you're really interested in the topic in the room that you're in or you didn't get your question answered, didn't hear what you wanted to hear, you're also welcome to stay in the same room. So here's what you can expect for each breakout room. Buildings and landscape is one topic. There we're going to discuss the landscape, the balance of passive and active recreation in the park, the community garden, and opportunities for youth engagement. Economic impact will be another breakout session. Museum and programming will be a third. We're going to discuss the visitor experience and foundations programming there. And then we have two other breakout sessions that are going to be run and organized by the city of Chicago. The Chicago Department of Transportation is here to talk about their proposed changes and improvements for pedestrians, bicyclists, and drivers. We're going to also discuss their community questions on infrastructure and road improvements. Also, the Chicago Park District is here to talk about their plans for the brand new track and turf field right across Stony Island from Hyde Park Academy. They're going to discuss other improvements considered in the park, including golf, the movement of recreational fields, and, and demonstrate their coordination within the framework plan. Now, if you don't get a chance to speak tonight, or if you have questions after the night is over, we still want to hear from you. So we encourage you to fill out one of the comment cards we have around the event tonight, or you can leave your questions or comments on our website. That's www obama.org. We are reading every single thing that's posted there, and we deeply appreciate hearing from you. Now, as I close and we move on with the rest of the program, I want to say something else. I love this city. This is my hometown. The world is watching us today. Let's show them how we can work together to accomplish big things. We have people from all across the city here. Meet somebody new. Say hi to your neighbor, to the person sitting next to them. Ask why they're here, what they care about. We can accomplish big things. Now, we can disagree, sometimes passionately, but with our eye on all that has made Chicago great and what we can do together in the future. Now, let's get started. Thank you. We're going to start our program today with a video that outlines the opportunity that we have to build something great in the community that has such a special place in history. Thank you. I think the South Side of Chicago is one of the most you know, dynamic, robust, transformational spaces that I know I've been privileged to live and be a part of. It's an interesting blend of civic involvement, of uh, commitment to education, uh, but also a commitment to the arts. People who live on the south side of Chicago are the most kind, understanding people I've ever met. The south side of Chicago uh, gives to the world a framework for community organizing. One thing that is really exciting about the prospects of the Obama Presidential Center being located in Jackson Park is the genuine commitment to try to tap in and honor this legacy and honor the people who kind of gave us that legacy. It has been an example to many people that you can do the impossible on the south side of Chicago, but be ready when the opportunity arrives. This will bring people to the South Side to try the restaurants that are here, to see what the businesses are that are here, to utilize the lakefront that is the South Side. When you think about the visibility that it's going to bring to the South Side of Chicago, the voice that it's going to bring to the residents of the city of Chicago, that really makes me excited. There is a positive contribution to the health and wealth of the South Side. It's gonna build hope, and it's gonna build excitement, and it's gonna let young people know on the south and west side of Chicago that no matter where you came from, you are greatness, and you can produce greatness.
everybody back there? Yo, you can see me? Yeah. So, I love you back, and I, I decided that uh, I was not going to miss out on the fun tonight. And whoever was in charge of making it 60 degrees in February, I want to thank you. Because that's not how I remember February in Chicago. Everybody have a seat. It's good to see all of you. Uh, for, for, first of all, uh, can people please uh, give it up for Mike Stratmanis, who's been doing such an outstanding job? Uh, I will talk. I, I, <laughs> I miss you too. That's. <laughs> so. That, that, that's why I want to build this presidential center here, so I can see you more often. Um, so Mike Stratmanis, I'm, I'm going to talk about him just for a second. Uh, when I first met Mike, uh, Michelle and I were, were both lawyers at Sidley and Austin, we were, and, and Mike was our paralegal. And uh, he was a skinny little guy. Uh, but as you got a sense, uh, from him tonight. Uh, he was not just smart, but he was sincere and thoughtful and cared about the community. And uh, I I've just been lucky that in my path through the Senate and then the presidency, uh, Mike has been there uh, every step of the way. And so uh, him running this community building process and input process uh, could not be more important. Uh, and, and it's something that I care deeply about. Um, so, so I'm not going to be here the whole time because I got to get home to see Michelle. Yes, I do. <laughs> so, uh, but, but what I did want to do is come by and, and I've had a chance a couple of times to address crowds about the Presidential Center uh, over the last year, but we're getting uh, forward in the process now. So I wanted to give you an update and, and, and remind people of why I think this has such enormous potential. When I was in my last year in the White House, I realized that uh, I, you know, I'd only be 55 when I left, which I know for young people here, it seems old, but it doesn't seem old to me. And so I thought, okay, I've got some time, and, and I'm going to want to use that time wisely. And I had to ask myself, what's the thing that I could do that would have the most impact on the most people in trying to create opportunities? and jobs, and justice, and a, a vision that lifts people up. And I thought to myself that uh, there are a bunch of issues I care about. I care about criminal justice reform. I care about climate change. I care about economic inequality. I, I care about uh, poverty. I care about equal pay for women. Uh, and each of these issues, uh, it was my intent and my commitment that I would be working with organizations that are doing their part to move those issues forward. But when I thought about the thing that I knew I could do uniquely, uh, it was to recruit and identify and lift up and inspire and mentor and convene and support the next generation of leadership. Here in Chicago, around the world, across the nation. 
And the reason I knew I could do that is because I had seen it in my campaigns and I had seen it during the presidency. The incredible talent, idealism, work ethic, imagination, vision, innovation of young people all across America and all across the world. Wherever I went, I'd meet with young people. I'd have town hall meetings with them. We'd, we'd get them involved in our campaigns. We'd get them involved in various initiatives. And instead of them saying, we can't do that, they'd say, yes, we could. Instead of asking themselves, why should I do something, they'd say, why not? And that spirit of young people, when they're given an opportunity, and when they're involved, and when they're engaged, and, and, and we lift up their horizons and say, there's nothing you can't achieve, that's the spirit that has brought progress to this country and to this city every step of the way. It's what created the Civil Rights Movement. It's what created the drive for women's equality. It's, it's, what created the workers' movement and the environmental movement. And you're seeing it here today in the wake of the tragedy in Florida. Look how young people are the ones who've stood up and said, we are tired of gun violence. We're tired of our classmates and our teachers being shot. We saw that on criminal justice reform. Young people saying we want to be treated fairly and equally by the criminal justice system. So that idealism and that sense of possibility is undimmed among young people all around the city and all across the country. It is true in every community, regardless of race, regardless of ethnicity and religion. That talent is there, but as we all know, so often that talent is not tapped. People aren't looking out for young people. They're not giving them the opportunities that they need. They're not showing them a path towards leadership. And so what I thought is, if, if we could create a place, a hub around teaching, training, encouraging, mentoring, lifting up young people from every walk of life, then those folks would end up leading organizations and movements for change for years, for decades, for generations to come. And more importantly, in some ways, at a time when we're so discouraged about politics and how people are yelling at each other all the time and calling folks names and the, the divisions that exist. If we could bring young people of talent and energy together and have them get to know each other and work together and build bridges and encourage and support each other, then maybe Young people could help lead us out of that kind of division that we're seeing that prevents us from meeting so many of the challenges that exist today. So, so instead of building a conventional library, what we wanted to do was build a center, something that was lively, something that was dynamic, something that was active and had a real impact. We wanted to make sure there were programs that would take young people and give them opportunities and training and help them on a path to college and jobs. We wanted to make sure that we had apprenticeships and, and, and training programs for young would-be organizers and, and, and young would-be leaders on a variety of issues. We wanted to be able to bring talent from all around the world to help train these young people. And, and host workshops and conferences and concerts and theater 
and the arts. We wanted it to be meaningful and we wanted it to be fun. And so then the question was, well, where are we going to put it? And Michelle and I talked, and that part was easy. Because on the south side of Chicago, <laughs> so sight. On the south side of Chicago, on the south side of Chicago, I first arrived in this great city. And I got my first job in public service and community organizing. And I worked with churches. And I made lifelong friendships. And I came into my own and I became a man and I took responsibility. And even after I went to law school, I came back to the South Side. And I met a girl from the South Side named Michelle Obama. Then she was Michelle Robinson. And we got married and we lived in my outstanding mother-in-law's house <laughs> until we saved enough to buy our first condo on the south side of Chicago. And then we had Malia Obama born on the south side and Sasha on the south side. And I was elected to my first office on the south side. And started running for Senate on the south side. And became president because of the south side of Chicago. So we were going to have the presidential center on the south side of Chicago. And the reason that was important to me was not just the personal connection, but it was also because I knew this community. It is a community I had worked in, that I had seen incredible talent and hope, but I had also seen hardship and suffering. I knew the goodness of the people, but I also knew how neglect and, and discrimination and isolation so often could lead to violence and hopelessness. And what I thought to myself is, if, if we're building a world-class institution, if, if we are bringing to bear all these resources, all this money, all this talent, and creating all these programs, then there was the possibility that not only could the center thrive, but this could anchor a transformation of the South Side to create more jobs, more business opportunities, more educational opportunities, more hope. It would send a message to young people on the South Side that you count, that you matter, that the parks on the south side should look like the parks on the north side. That they should be as vibrant and have as many amenities and have as much programming. And in, on a nice summer day, folks shouldn't have to drive north, but should be able to just walk out their front door. So that's why we chose Jackson Park. That's why we wanted it here on the south side. And we are incredibly fortunate that we have been able to assemble an amazing team, uh, world-class architects and Todd Williams and Billy Tsen, who are here today, and they'll be probably part of the, some of the workshops. We've been incredibly 
fortunate that a whole bunch of institutions are interested in partnering with us, not just institutions here in Chicago, but around the world who've said, what can we do to help and make this happen? And what you are going to be hearing about and seeing tonight, those of you who have not already been uh, paying attention or haven't been reached yet, what you'll be seeing is that we've got a plan where over the next four years, we are going to create $3 billion worth of economic activity. We're going to create 5,000 jobs just in the construction, 2,500 jobs that will be permanent and ongoing. We are working with all of you and communities to make sure that it's not folks just from the outside who are doing the work and benefiting from the construction process, but that we are creating a pipeline for young people to get trained so that they can work in this process. And my certainty, not my hope, not my expectation, my certainty is that uh, we are going to be able uh, to make this uh, a jewel, not just for the South Side, but for the entire city of Chicago. One of my beliefs has always been that Chicago is a world-class city. It is one of the greatest cities in the world. I think it's the greatest. But, what, but I think what we all know is that so often, you, know, you drive downtown, you see the amazing museum campus and Millennium Park, and you, you drive by Oak Street Beach, and there are volleyball players out, and the sailboats are out, and Navy Pier, and, and you think, this is unbelievable, but there is another Chicago. There are kids on the south side who don't even think about going downtown, who in this global economy are feeling left behind, don't know what's possible, aren't linked to opportunity. And if we can stitch all the vibrancy and beauty and, and strength of the city so that it stretches all the way across the lakefront, all the way down. If we've got an anchor south, just like we've got so many anchors north, if we've got a situation where when people come to Chicago, they say, yeah, I want to go to Millennium Park, but man, I want to go to Jackson Park. If, 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 if when people think of Chicago, they say, well, there, you got Michael Jordan, and, and, and you got Oprah, and, 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 and you got the, the Picasso in, 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 in Daly Plaza. And, but I, I hear that Presidential Center is cool, too. <laughs> and when they travel south, and it's estimated we might have as many as 700,000 people just going through the museum portion of this. And then they say, well, where are you going to get something to eat? <laughs> oh, and it turns out there's a restaurant right on Stony that people need to check out. And they say to themselves, you know, we saw some temporary art exhibits inside the museum. Oh, and it turns out that Theaster Gates and some of the artists right here on the south side have a studio right nearby. Sud suddenly, the strengths of Chicago become manifest, become apparent everywhere. And that makes the city strong. It makes all of Chicago proud. And it makes the opportunities that this city has to offer accessible to every child in Chicago. So, so that is our 
intention, and that is my certainty that we will be able to create this. Now, last point I'm going to make, and then I've got time, I think, for a couple questions before I go home to see Michelle. Um, a project of this size is complicated. And I know that, in part because historically on the south side of Chicago, as is true for many communities that sometimes are under-resourced, there's a feeling of stuff being done to us instead of for us. And so sometimes there's suspicion and concern and trepidation, which means you're worried. Uh, and that is why we have tried to design the most possible transparency around getting community input, meeting with everybody who's out there, having conversations, making changes where it makes sense, and we will continue to do this all the way through. But I do want to just remind everybody that I'm out there raising a lot of money to get this thing done. And my hope is that this is going to be uh, something that long out, out, outlives me and Michelle. This is our gift. This is us wanting to give back. And what it means, and what that means is that you know, at a certain point, in order to, to create something new and beautiful and important, uh, at some point we're going to have to get going. And there's going to be some folks who say, well, you know what, we, w we want the tower moved just to the left. <laughs> or, you know, I don't like how those trees are set up there. And then there are going to be some folks who say, well, I just like things just the way they are. So I don't want y'all to do nothing. Because it might be noisy if kids are coming to the park. So I like it empty. I'm just telling the truth now. I, and look, I get it, you know, I'm, I'm not quite of the age where I just like things quiet, but sometimes Sasha's playing her music in her room, and I, I, why am I feeling the bass coming up through the floor? I'm sitting here trying to read. So I understand that impulse, but that's not how you build a vibrant community. Uh, so there are going to be some people who will not be happy and are not going to sign up for every single aspect of this project, which is the, in, it is the nature of a project of this size. But here's the thing, is like, you can never make folks 100% happy. So we want to be open, we want to listen, we are going to be uh, fairer than fair, to quote Harold Washington, in how we approach the design of this presidential center. And the programming that's involved is going to continually evolve to meet the specific needs of the community. But at some point, we're going to get going. And uh, the reason I'm mentioning this is just because, you know, I know that I love my folks in the Chicago media, but I also know that, like, it's just the nature of things that if you can find one person who was unhappy, <laughs> they'll get some TV time. <laughs> Doesn't matter what the other 99 people said, let's find that one person. I, that's fine. But, but I, I just... I just want to let people know uh, that we are being deliberate, we're being thoughtful, we're being inclusive. At some point, uh, 
our intention is to get moving on this. Because uh, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, uh, I want young people all across the south side of Chicago, all across Chicago, all across America, to be able to look at this center and say, this is a sign I count, and this is a sign that I can change the world. And, and that, that is more important than any other legacy uh, that I could possibly have. All right? Thank you very much, Chicago. That's, uh, Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. So I've got uh, I've got time for a couple of questions. Stratmanis is in here somewhere. Here I am. Stratmanis got the mic. Mike, go ahead and call on somebody. All right. We have received questions online from our neighbors on the south side. Uh, is Wanda Brown in the house? Wanda Brown. There you are. All right, Wanda. Wanda, please ask President Obama your question. President Obama, I would like to ask if the Obama Presidential Center will be open all year round. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. uh, the, uh, is this mic working? Can you all hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this, this, this is a year, I mean, we might close on Christmas. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> no, no, but, but, but the goal here is to have this as a open, active community facility. And when you guys go into the breakout sessions, what you'll see is that the tower is the museum portion. And there will be constant access to the ground floor. And then at the top, by the way, we've got a tower where people will be able to look out and, and look back and see the skyline and see the city or, and see the lake. Um, those lower buildings that you're seeing, those are going to be classrooms, recording studios, training centers, workshops. Uh, and the plaza will be full of activity. What you won't see in this picture, but what you'll see in the breakout sessions is we're then creating you know, uh, children's playgrounds, additional athletic facilities, uh, walking paths, all of which will be used year round. Uh, and this is probably a good time for me to mention just some specifics about the kind of programming, because I know this is maybe something that people are interested in. Uh, we will be trying to create programming that uh, is tailored for people at different levels. So let's say that there are a bunch of young community leaders who are already doing outstanding work. A young man who has already set up a program uh, to help ex-offenders find jobs. Or a young woman who's set up a, a, a coding program for young girls in the community. You know, we might create a program where we're providing intensive support, training, mentoring, helping them figure out how they can scale up, how they can get additional financing, how they can get greater publicity, how they can expand their organization. At the next level, let's say there's somebody like I was when I got out of school. I want to change the world, but I don't know how to do it. We take that young person, we might put them through a day-long training program or a three-day training program or a six-week internship where we help them develop their skills in order to organize a community. 
figure out how to work on an issue of importance, uh, figure out how to publicize it, figure out how to get other young people involved. Then we've got programs under the umbrella of My Brother's Keeper, which we initiated right after the Trayvon Martin shooting, to focus on uh, young men at risk, young men of color, young men who lacked opportunity. So we expect to partner with the schools to work on everything from mentorship programs to apprenticeship programs to uh, coding programs to enhanced athletic programs. Michelle has a counterpart set of programs for young women in communities. All of these we can partner with existing organizations as well as schools. And what's really exciting is that the longer we work and the more we're developing these programs, what we're discovering is, is that there are all kinds of people who want to partner with us. So there are employers who say, we'd love to diversify our workforce. Can you help us design programs to take young people, put them in part-time jobs that they can then access after they graduate? Universities want to partner with us to figure out how do we uh, work with young people so that they're prepared for college, know what the application process is, know what kind of financial aid they can access, make sure they're getting their applications in on time. We've got artists. You know, part, one of the reasons that we want to put in a recording studio is that we'll have the capacity to bring in Chance or Jay-Z or Bruce Springsteen and have them do a workshop for young people who want to know how do I uh, get into the music business or how do I become a producer. Uh, and so we'll have the opportunity to continually upgrade and update the programs that we're doing based on what it is that young people need uh, and the kinds of partnerships that we're prepared uh, to enter into. And the community will have continuing input in how that evolves. Uh, so uh, I, I wanted to emphasize that because we're actually going to get started on some programming at a very small level as early as this year just to test things out. You know, we want to, you know, uh, I personally am, am already in conversations with various organizations, for example, in the city that are already working on uh, reducing violence in the city and finding out how will we partner with them and bring some additional resources and attention to their efforts. We're already looking at a first class of what we're calling Obama Fellows, who will place in various organizations so that they can get concrete hands-on skills uh, in uh, working with a nonprofit organization or an advocacy organization. So all these things we're going to develop slowly. We're not going to try to do everything all at once. Uh, because what we want to do is test it and find out, is, is this working? And are the young people getting something out of it? And is it resulting in something concrete? More kids getting into school, or more kids getting jobs, or young people uh, staying out of trouble. Uh, and then we're just going to have some fun stuff involved in the programming, like uh, we are looking at creating some additional athletic facilities, as I said, uh, so that at some point, uh, when it's ready, uh, I can organize my little all-star basketball game. And, um, you know, I got, I got a bunch of friends who I think I can call. Um, I may be getting a little old now to hang with them, but, uh, but, you know, I might get out there at least for five minutes before I'm out of breath. All right. Next question. Sir, uh, we have a question here from Anita Josie. Anita, are you here? Hi, Anita. Hi. Step up. 
Hi, President Obama. I have a question. How is the Presidential Center working to revitalize the South Side without pushing out exi existing residents like myself? Well, you know, this is really an important issue. Some people have asked, by the way, uh, why did we locate on a park? Part of the reason was, as I described earlier, uh, when you look at the most vibrant parks in the world, whether it's Central Park in New York or Grant Park downtown and Lincoln Park uh, or in Paris, Luxembourg Park, what characterizes great parks is activity and life and movement and people being around and people being outside and stuff going on, it, which isn't to say that you don't want quiet spaces and contemplative spaces, but it just means that it's a lived-in place. It's not, so, it's not behind a glass case to look at. It, it, it's something to be in. That's the point. But one of the things that we were also uh, committed to is making sure that we weren't displacing residents in the construction of the actual facility. Uh, and we will not be. Now, the issue that then gets raised is, okay, that's true, but isn't it true that once this gets built and all these visitors are coming and everybody sees how pretty Jackson Park is and how nice the lakefront is, more and more people want to live down here. And there is constantly a balance that we've got to strike between making sure that existing residents are benefiting from increased economic development, benefiting from increases in home values, and benefiting from more businesses being active, and all that revenue, because that creates more wealth and more jobs and so forth. Uh, we have to balance that with the fact that we want more economic activity in this community. And because that's what creates opportunity. And with more economic opportunity, it does mean that there's going to be more demand for all kinds of amenities in the community. So you can't have one without the other. You, you can't say, we want more jobs, more businesses, more opportunity for our kids, but otherwise we want everything to stay exactly the same. It just doesn't work that way. But what we can do is make sure that we're working with organizations and institutions in the community to preserve affordable housing, to make sure that it is residents that are benefiting, those are the kinds of plans, activities, uh, foresight that we have to have uh, in order to uh, get that perfect balance, re revitalizing and renewing the community, but also making sure that people who are already living there are benefiting from it. Uh, and, and I know that I heard a couple of people saying, well, we're concerned about, like, Maybe rents might go up. Well, here's the thing is that, like, if you go into some neighborhoods in Chicago where there are no jobs, no businesses, and nothing's going on, in some cases the rent's pretty cheap. But our kids are also getting shot on that block. So what I want to do is make sure that People have jobs, kids have opportunity, the schools have a better tax base, and if the rent goes up a little bit, people can pay it because they got more money. And if, if they're seniors, if they're on fixed incomes, if they're disabled, then we've got to make sure that there's a process in place to encourage and, and plan for affordable housing units being constructed there. So, but, but here, here's, here's the one thing I will say. I, I, I think a lot of times people get nervous about 
uh, gentrification, and understandably so. But what I will also say is this. I first came to Chicago in 1985 and was on the South Side for, I'm just doing the math real quick, 20 some years <laughs> before moving to Washington because of the presidency. It is not my experience during that time that the big problem on the South Side has been too much development, <laughs> too much economic activity, too, you know, too many people being displaced because all these folks from Lincoln Park are all pouring into the South Side. That's not what's happened. I mean, it's happened in some places along, you know, near, you know, like West Loop area. Most of that has happened right around the city. There is so much room. Think about all the abandoned buildings and, and the vacant lots that are around here. We, we've got such a long way to go in terms of economic development before you're even going to start seeing the prospect of significant gentrification. It, it, it's, Malia's kids <laughs> might have to worry about that. Right now, what we got to worry about is you know, broken curbs and trash and boarded up buildings. And that's what, that's what we really need to work on. Uh, this is a good time also to raise a, a, a point that I know some folks have talked about, uh, and that is how do we assure that the community benefits? And I know that there are some folks here, I heard one, at least one person back there, but I'm sure there are a few more uh, talking about the idea of a community uh, benefits agreement. And, and, and I want to I, I address this because, uh, because I actually uh, think it is admirable and important that communities, when they've got big projects coming in, are paying attention to, okay, who's building it, who's benefiting, who's getting the jobs, how, how is it all being organized, how is it all going to be arranged. So I respect the, the intent and the motivations on this. But, but what I've said before in previous community meetings, and I just want to repeat, is that we're not coming in here as a for-profit organization. Like, I'm out there raising a bunch of money to get this thing built, to get the programming up and running. I'm not getting a salary out of the foundation. And Michelle and my motivations are entirely to make sure that the community benefits. And the concern that I have, so, so, all right, but set aside my motives. Let's assume you, you said, well, yeah, that's nice talk, but, you know, we, we, don't, we don't necessarily believe you, uh, and, and maybe you're doing this to, you know, on behalf of, I don't know, <laughs> a bunch of developers or something who are going to come in here. And, even if you didn't believe that, what we're committed to is being completely transparent about who the contractors are, the pipeline we're going to set up for hiring. We're reaching out to every organization. We will show what we're doing. Everybody will be able to see it. And the danger here is, is that if we sign an agreement with any one organization or two organizations or five organizations, I've lived in, on the South Side and in Chicago long enough to know that they're not representing everybody on the South Side. So now suddenly I've got five other organizations that are saying, hey, how come, how come you signed with them? What about us? And, and now, then you got 10. Oh, I just formed an organization. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. And next thing you know, you've got 40 organizations or 50 organizations, everybody has their own organization saying we should get 
We should have, say, control, decision-making over who gets the contract, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we're not going to do that Be because what I want to do is to make sure everybody's represented. And by committing to a transparent process that everybody can see what we're doing, everybody can make a judgment as to whether we're following through on the commitments that we make. And, and the thing that I am absolutely convinced of is that at the end of this process, when people look and see who did the work, who benefited, people are going to feel good about the fact that this was a South Side institution and that the people who live there not only are going to benefit from uh, going forward, but benefited from the construction and creation of, of the center. All right? Okay. I love all of you. I'll be back in Chicago. Michelle says hey. Malia, Sasha, they all say hey. Take care. Thank you. Get to work in these workshops. Thank you.